So here we are. Once again, we are asking this question. Did God regret creating mankind? How do we get to this question? Simple. There's a verse which is very confounding. It says, Commonly translated as God regretted creating man and it made him sad in his heart. So obviously this has tremendous theological consequences. It sounds like God made a mistake and didn't know the outcome of what was going to happen, what choices mankind was going to make, and so he got sad. And in fact, the Medrash even brings a heretic who asks this question. He says to the rabbi, how could God be sad? Doesn't that mean he didn't know it was coming? I thought you said God is omniscient. He's above time and space. Interesting is that the rabbi gives him an answer, but as we'll see, it's not a very satisfying answer. It worked for the heretic. The rabbi said, did you ever have a baby? And the, and the heretic said, of course, we, we celebrated the birth of our child. And the rabbi said, but didn't, weren't you cognizant at the same time that one day that baby would die as everyone else dies? Shouldn't you have been sad? And the heretic said, what are you talking about? When the baby's born, we're happy. If something happened you know, to the baby, then we'd be sad. We don't have these two emotions at the same time. It's, we just take it as it comes. And, and the rabbi said, yeah, the same thing with God. Happy when he created the world, sad when he had to destroy the world. And the heretic was satisfied with that answer. But when you think about it, it's not a satisfying answer because if God is above time and space, so in theory, if you wanted to assign human emotions to God, you could say that God could have simultaneously been happy and sad because God you know, knows the outcome of everything. So why did the heretic accept it? I guess because he was a heretic. It means he brought God down to human levels and whatever worked for him in his life will work for God. That's why he was a heretic. <laughs> so, but we're not out of the woods yet because the mentors goes on to give an explanation of what this uh, verse meant that God was uh, regretted and sad. And the explanation raises even more questions. Uh, Rabbi Huda basically is saying that uh, there was regret before me because man was created in the lower world on earth and if he had been created in the higher world he wouldn't have rebelled at all. Wait a second. Now you're back on the regret theme. I thought we're trying to get our way out of this. So let me redefine that because I think there's something very fundamental going on here, which basically I believe Rabbi Huda is saying that regret before me means this has the appearance, the appearance of regret to the outsider looking in because they forget one fundamental principle that the world works on and that is free will. Since there's free will, so God, you know, had an, a, a world that he created where people can make choices. You know, we, we would have liked everyone to make the choices to have a just and honest society, a uh, society where they're seeking to be moral and seeking out God. It's not what happened. As we mentioned in a previous uh, Far Torah, they actually had a society where they brutalized people, women in particular. And in fact, it was the judges, the people of high position and power who brutalized everyone. So you see, they made bad choices. But God is basically saying, you see, in, in the, the way it works is in the upper realms, there's no free choice. That's where the angels are. In the lower realms, free choice reigns. So unfortunately, they made the wrong choice. And the consequences are that God is going to have to start the world again. There'll be a flood and it'll start again with Noah. But at least there is free will that prevailed in this unfortunate situation. And that's something that we should take heart in and say, well, that's, you know, that's good. 
because we're not turning into automatons, we're not turning into angels, we are, we are who we are and we have this potential always to get messages from God and, and recalibrate based on what happens to us and perhaps learn lessons and grow and become more moral and sensitive to the way we treat other people. That's our potential, that's the human potential. Didn't happen in this case, but they had the potential. So again, looking in from the outside, it looks like regret, but it's actually just about free will. And it actually is not the first time we had this idea. Uh, if you remember back when uh, the murder of Cain killing his brother Abel, so God was also saying, you know, the, the, the blood of uh, Hevel is crying out to me, meaning I know it looks bad. I could have stopped it. I could stop every human being on this planet from harming one another, but that's not free will. And one of the fortunate consequences of free will is that there's going to be human tragedy. That's just the way the world is designed. And that really, I think, is the principle that we're learning from. So it's interesting how the Torah purposely uses these words, God regretted and he was sad because God wants these principles to be front and center to people to confront them and understand them. Nothing is being hidden. God is not, we're not shying away from using language that might be controversial and misunderstood. No, we are pushing the issue so that everyone understands the way world, the world works and what human potential is and the consequences if we make such, such bad choices that, you know, ultimately God had to start again. Of course, God promised after the flood never to do that again, but that's how bad it got. Anyways, I hope that made sense and uh, hope you have a great Shabbat. Take care.